Would you like to make your cutout characters more flexible by introducing hand-drawn elements, but without losing the connection benefits of cutout animation? Well, that's what hooks are for, and what we'll be looking at today. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Darren, and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. And if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe so you don't miss out? Over the past few weeks I've shown how you can set up and animate a complex character using the stage schematic to connect body parts. And this works for a basic moving character and is useful in many situations, but when you start to make more complex characters or want more expressive movement by using multiple drawings, you'll find that this standard way to connect your character's body parts might not work for you. This is because connections using the standard schematic connects each part where it's drawn and doesn't take into account any movement in a single part's drawings. Let me demonstrate. So for example, here's a character waving. And if I just change the visibility of his shorts slightly, so that we can see through to his body, you can see how I've rotated his body slightly to try and give some more expression to the wave. And to help, I've drawn the bottom part of his body with a curve to try and keep it aligned with the shorts. But what if we want him to be more expressive and not just hinged at pivot points, like we have here? Having your character do a big wave, we can't just keep rotating the body, it'll look too stiff. And you can always use a plastic tool to change its shape, and we'll start looking at that next week. And besides, we might want to show the clothing differently, or even transform the body altogether. So to do that, we should just draw a few different frames for the body, and I've done that already, as you can see over here. So you can see drawings 2, 3 and 4, where the body leans to the right, in a way that you can't do with a rotation tool, and also I've drawn these lines to give creases in the clothing. Which is a very simple drawing here, but shows the basic idea of how you can draw separate drawings for each movement, but still sit within the cutout character rig. But now if I also show the head and the arms, you'll see the problem with this. And although the drawings in the body moves, the arms and head still sit in the same position and don't follow the new body drawings. And of course there's no way that OpenTunes can know to move the connection points, or where to move them to, so you have to do something about it. And of course you could just move the arms for each frame. Like this, but it's so time consuming to do for every single frame, and really you lose the benefit of setting up a rig if you're manually placing them for each frame. But there is a way you can fix it, and it's using hooks. Hooks allow you to place and move connection points on drawings in the same level to keep connected parts, well, connected. Let me show you. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll select the hook tool, which is this jab here. And the only option you get with this tool is to snap the hook tool to lines. But we don't want that today because we want to just put hooks anywhere we choose, so I'll untick that. And all we need to do with the hook tool is to define the points where different body parts connect to each other. So we'll start with the body by selecting the body column. So we want three hook points, one for the head and one for each of the arms. And remember the hook points are just for connecting parts that don't deal with rotation of the part. That's the work through the center point on the animation tool. But most likely the hook point will need to be where the item rotates. So let's put the three hook points on. And all you need to do is tap on the screen where you want the hook points, and we want three. So we'll have one for the head, just here, one for the right arm, just here, and one for the left arm. And if you get them wrong, you can always click and drag to move them to where you need them to be. So what that's done is it set up the three hook points for the body on drawing number one, and we'll deal with the other drawings in a second. So let's just connect the parts. So the head, we select that, we then want to put the adjoining hook point on the head, which would be around here, on the right arm, which would be around here, and on the left arm. And you notice that the numbering of the hook point starts at one for each separate body part. So the head and both arms only have one hook point, but the body has three. Okay, so let's just move those for the other drawings. So if we go to drawing number two on the body, You'll notice the drawing changed, but the hook points haven't, going from drawing 1 to drawing 2, and then through to 3 and 4, of course. So all we need to do is to go to each drawing in turn, and move each hook point to where it needs to be, to allow each body part to join on this drawing. 
So we'll do number two first, then we'll connect them, and then we'll do drawings three and four, and you might see it more clearly. So on the body, hook point number one is for the head, so that needs to move to about there. The arm is moving to here, and the right arm is approximately there. So if we go to the schematic, and I've got a separate view for that. So we can see the shorts are the root item connected to the table, followed by the body, the head hangs off the body, the right arm one is connected to the body with its remaining parts, and then the left arm one is connected to the body as well with its pieces. So at the minute we've got a connected line from the blue ball on the child body part through to the red ball on the parent. And each child body part can only have one parent, but the parents can have many children. But by connecting them this way, each part sits as though it's drawn on a piece of paper just placed on top of its parent. So that when you draw a new image for the body part, it doesn't move the child. And what we need to do is connect the hook points by a number. So the head connects to hook point number one on the body, the right arm to hook point number two, and the left arm to hook point number three. And it's very simple to do. First you need to click the button at the bottom right here, which changes from a generic connection point to a specific connection point. So all we need to do is set the hook numbers on each of the connection points. Now at the minute, all three connections are going to one point on the body. So if we just delete those by clicking and dragging and turning the lines blue, then tapping the delete key. So it's very simple to connect these body parts together. If we go to frame one, so you can see the standard bodies we connect them. So all you need to do is to make the connections of the hook points from the head to the body and from both arms to the body. And at the connection markers that state either A or B, you just need to set the hook point number of which on the three child body parts there's only one hook and on the body part there's three hooks. So all you need to do on the connection points marked A or B is to set the hook point on that body part and connect it to the hook point on the adjoining body part. So on the head there's only one hook point so we change that to number one by clicking and dragging on these arrows. Connect that to the body. We notice it created the second connection point ready for later. So on the body the head is connected to hook point number one so again, we click and drag on these arrows and move that to number one. The right arm again only has one hook point, so hover over B until you see the arrows, click and drag until it says number one. Then connect that to the spare connection point on the body. And again, hover over it and change this to hook point number two. And the arm immediately snaps to the right hand side of his body. The left arm again only has one connection point, so we change that to one. Drag that to the spare connection point on here, and then change it to hook point number three. And that is it, fairly straightforward. So on the body, there's three hook points, one, two, and three, and they're connected to the only hook point on the head and both arms, hook point number one. But this now has the benefit of when you go to drawing number two, where we move the hook points earlier, both arms and head follow. So you can see the head and arms follow to the side as the drawing changes. But if we go to drawing number three, we haven't moved the hook points. So the head and arms aren't connected. So let's take a quick look at that. So you simply select the hook tool, make sure you've got the body selected in the X sheet or the timeline, and you see the three hook points. And now, because we've connected the hook points in the schematic, as we drag the hook point, the body part will move with it. Which is why sometimes it's easier to move the hook points on the body once you've connected them together. So let's move them. So there's the arm first. We'll click and drag that over to the right here. The right arm is there and the head is in the center. Drawing number four, it moves over slightly again for all of them. And of course, to make the animation work properly, you'd need to add rotation correctly. So I'll just fix up the animation now to work with the new body. So instead of rotating the body, we'll use these new drawings. So the first thing we'll do is to delete these keys. So we'll select all four of them and tap delete. So the point where it was leaning over these frames here will then need to show the lean. So there we go, a more expressive wave. So using hooks is used whenever one link drawing changes, showing a character moving. So as you can see, this works with the character leaning, but it could just as easily be used if the character twists, 
turns, moves or transforms in any other way. So hopefully it will have sparked off plenty of ideas for you for making flexible character rigs. But to make them flexible without hand drawing frames like I have today, you can use the plastic tool. And that's what we'll be going through next week. And that's a guarantee. <laughs>